Apologies for the delay. Uh, please, it's taking some time, so it will not delay us. Maybe I will start this by God's grace. We sincerely apologize for this delay, please. Uh, at this very point in time, uh, may I have the honor of inviting our guest lecturer in person of Dr. Lukman Adedeji, who is actually professor in the Faculty of Education at the University of Lagos. Please, I'm very sorry, inshallah, I will try and get that uh, citation done before the lecture ends. To start Bismillah. Wa'ama alaikum wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wal-aqibat al-muttakeen. Wa ash-shadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wa da'u la sharika la. Wa ash-shadu an muhammadan abidu'u wa rasulu. Ala umma salli wa sallim. Wa barik ala adha nabil kareem. Wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi. Wa ayina ala umma ala sunnatihi. Wa amitna ala millatihi. Wa shurda fi sumratihi. Ma alladhina anamta alayhim. Bina sudikim. Wa shwada wa salihin. Alam Ahm, eminent brothers and sisters in Islam, I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I give who has given us the opportunity to engage in spiritual exercise. Allah has given us the opportunity to learn and to gain experiences. Allah has given us the opportunity to engage in exercises, the exercises which has actually taught us to a better Muslim. Better Muslim in the sense that all the things that are expected from us as Muslims were able to engage in all those things. As a result, there is no other topic that is more befitting at this period in time than the one that is coined by the organizers of this program, sustainability of the rewarding exercises in Ramadan. When we look at this topic, brothers and sisters in Islam, there are keywords there. The keywords are sustainability, rewarding exercises, and Ramadan. Let me begin by the last word there, which is Ramadan. As we all know, this year's Ramadan has come and gone. We pray to Almighty Allah to make us witness to eat, next year we could do that in life. In other words, that same Ramadan has given us the opportunity to partake in exercises, not just exercises, not just ordinary exercises, but exercises that are so rewarding. Kola Adul Ulama, one of the scholars of Islam said, Bisa Kaumu Kaumun, that among this group of Muslims, we have part of that group who do not know Almighty Allah sincerely, who do not know Almighty Allah the way it's supposed to be known, who do not comprehend what Almighty Allah is except during Ramadan. In other words, during Ramadan, Every man became a man of God. Every woman became a woman of God. Because Ramadan has given us the opportunity to do so many things. So many things that either to would not have been possible for us or easy for us, if not because 
of the magnanimity of Allah during the month of Ramadan. This was made possible because as the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, told us, the shayateen were changed. Therefore, they were not able to disturb the minds of Muslims. The doors or the gates of Jannat were wide open, while the gates of El were shut. Therefore, we were able to do a lot of things that we couldn't even believe that we can do. The opportunity which Ramadan has afforded us is to make us realize our potentials as Muslims, what we are capable of doing as Muslims. There are some people who could not even read a page of the Holy Quran in terms of Tilawa. But during the month of Ramadan, they were able to complete from Surah Al Fatiha to Surah Al Nas. Some people read one, some twice, some tries, and so on and so forth. Ordinarily, some of us will be looking at ourselves how could it be possible for me to complete? the tilawa of the Holy Quran within a very short period. That was made possible as a result of the magnanimity of Almighty Allah. And of course, you will agree with me that that is a part of the magnanimity of Allah. He has given us the opportunity to realize ourselves. He has given us that golden opportunity to tell us that we can do a lot, provided we are not careless, provided we heed the advice of Allah and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore, when we talk about Ramadan, Ramadan is full of opportunities. But whether we like it or not, Ramadan has come and gone. Of course, we experience pains there. But the pains of hunger, the pains of not being able to cohabit with our wives, and so on and so forth. But despite the pains, we're able to, to get gains, the gains that supersede the pains. We pray to Almighty Allah to make it sustainable, sustainable to us after the month of Ramadan. And we are talking about rewarding exercises. That is the second leg of this uh, topic, rewarding exercises. When we talk about the exercises of Ramadan, we can divide the exercises into about six. After dividing the exercises into about six, that will now lead us on its sustain sustainability. For example, Kila to Toham. Islam has come with a mechanism, a mechanism to reshape the lives of, of Muslims through Ramadan. Ramadan came and it regulated our eating habits. For example, before Ramadan, some people were used to eating three times a day, cost three square meals, some people twice, or reduction in our eating habits. Of course, we know that when a man eats and eats and eats and eats, it has positive and negative effect. Part of the positive, of course, it will give you energy to run around and to engage in your daily activities. But the negative is that you tend to forget that you are human being. You are not created for eating and drinking alone. There are so many other things that is expected of you. When Ramadan came, Ramadan now regulated our eating habits. We only take Zahur, that is the dull meal, I will take iftar, 
that is the one that we will do to break our fast. So people could not even believe that their eating habit could be regulated. There are some people who cannot joke with their breakfast or lunch. But Islam now came and moderated it through Ramadan that we only take Zahur. Whatever we're able to take during Zahur, at least that will last us till Iftar. Well, we started of the because of what they were already used to, but Allah made it easy and possible for us to adjust because of the love of Almighty Allah. Therefore, during Ramadan, we engage in fasting. And if you remember the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasalam, that says that whoever fasts for one day because of the love for Almighty Allah, such a person will have hellfire kept away from him for 70 kilometers. Therefore, when the prophet talked about fasting, fasting is not limited to Ramadan. The only difference is that Ramadan is compulsory. And as stated in the Holy Quran, Allah says, fasting of Ramadan is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may be conscious of Almighty Allah. That is about Ramadan. The prophet now gave us the, the holistic picture of Ramadan, of, of, of uh, fasting. That when a Muslim engages in fast for one day, the reward you will get, amongst several other reward, rewards, is that his uh, face will be kept away from air fire for seven kilometers. Therefore, we have been able to engage in Ramadan fast with a lot of benefits, a lot of reward. But after Ramadan, the gate of fasting has not closed, as we'll, be, we'll discuss it, inshallah, during the course of this uh, lecture. Therefore, when we are talking about the exercises of Ramadan, we'll be talking in terms of moderation or regulation of our eating uh, habits. We have been able to do it for 30 good days this year. And in need, those who had one ailment or the other, they were not disturbed. So people will say, no, no, I, I cannot fast because of this. But during Ramadan, they didn't have a choice. They engaged in it, and they discovered that their health was not affected in any way, except those who have serious ailments that could not allow them to fast. But the minor ones, which some people will use as excuses, Allah has given them the opportunity to fast for 30 days, and yet they were not uh, affected in any way. Alhamdulillah. So when we are talking about the activities of uh, Ramadan, one of such activities is uh, the fact that we are able to engage in fasting. And the only prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, uh, Man soma Ramadana iman and wati saban, the prophet says, whoever engages in fast, that is talking about it, the reward. Part of the reward is, is that Almighty Allah will forgive the sins of such a Muslim who engages in fast with a man, with sincerity of faith. And also he has hope to get his compensation from Almighty Allah. So fasting is one of those exercises. The second exercise is there. Uh, to know our sleeping habits was also regulated during Ramadan. When we talk about the sleeping uh, habits, some people, when they go to bed at night, they will not wake up until the following morning for Subway. But Alhamdulillah, Ramadan moderated our sleeping habits. During the afternoon, we only sleep for a little while. And after we have taken our iftar and salat ishai, 
will engage in Tarawi, 10 rakats, 10 long rakats. That used to be the period when some people would go to bed. That is for those who go to bed uh, early. But Ramadan regulated it. We have to wait until we observe our Tarawi before we go to bed. When we go to bed, brother and sister in Islam, we equally woke up around three or before three or past three. Not only to engage in our zahur, not only to eat, we equally engage in worship of Almighty Allah. We observe rakats starting from two, four, six, ten, and so on and so forth. Which means the period that we we are using to enjoy our sleep. Ramadan came and Ramadan regulated it. In other words, those who are not used to Kiyamu late, those who are not used to waking up at night to worship Almighty Allah, Ramadan came and Ramadan gave us that opportunity. Ramadan trained us that for a Muslim, you don't have to spend the whole night to sleep. You have to reduce the number of hours, take part of it to the worship of Almighty Allah. Therefore, during Ramadan, so many of our Muslim brothers were able to engage in that exercise, that spiritual exercise. And one of the benefits of waking up at night and do Qiyam Mulayn and also offer dua, that supplication, one of the scholars of Islam said, if a Muslim needs something from Allah and he has not gotten it, that means he does not need it. Because if he needs it, in actual fact, he only needs to take part in one exercise. What is that exercise? Is to wake up at night, perform nawafi, do istighfar, and supplicate to Allah and ask Allah for that thing that that Muslim has been asking for. If he's able to do it one day, two days, that, that is certain that Almighty Allah give him whatever he wants. Therefore, during Ramadan, those that used to sleep throughout the night in Kiyamulay, in Tahajjud, Nasfat as an organization, I set aside a, a, a particular day in a month in order to train all the Muslims, train them to do Qiyam Lay, train them to do Tahajjud. And Nasfat has been doing it for so many years. A lot of people have benefited from that training of Nasfat. And Ramadan has come to consolidate it. Consolidate that apart from the days set aside, by Nasfat, you can also do your own as individuals. You can also train members of your family to do the same thing, so that when you are, when you cultivate the habit of waking up at night to do Qiyamulayl, to do the Hajjud, definitely whatever you need from Allah, through your supplication, Almighty Allah will do it. When we are talking about exercises we engage in during Ramadan that are so rewarding, will not forget killer to know. That is a moderation or regulation of our sleeping uh, habit. And of course, what we do during that period is to engage in the worship of Almighty Allah. So Allah, Allah says, Allah says he has not created man and jinn for nothing except to worship him. When we talk about the worship of Allah, it's not limited to the, uh, the, the obligatory salat alone. We have to engage in our field day and night. And Ramadan has come and gone. And part of the lessons that we have learned, that is uh, the Kiyamu late that we're able to engage in during Ramadan. Inshallah, we'll still talk about this sustainability during the course of this uh, lecture. And the third one is a uh, killer to Kalam. Killer to Kalam is a lot of people will talk and talk, they will talk politics, they will talk sports, they will talk social trending issues and so on and so forth before Ramadan. 
But when Ramadan came, Alhamdulillah, we were able to reduce the number of hours spent in vain talk, number of hours spent to discuss family issues. And instead of engaging in those ones, we now engage in Tilawatul Quran. We engage in listening to tafsir. We engage in learning about Islam. Therefore, during Ramadan, we have so many of our mosques that organize tafsir and the opportunity to the Muslims to learn about the Holy Quran, to learn about Islam, to learn about their responsibilities to Allah, their responsibilities to themselves, their responsibilities to the nation, their responsibilities to even everything, the, 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 the environment in which they live in. Therefore, instead of engaging in talk and talk and talk all the time, we now channel it towards the worship of Almighty Allah in terms of the Tilawat al Quran, in terms of the Tafsir, in terms of a teaching and learning about Islam. Brother and sisters in Islam, according to Prophet Muhammad wasallam, says during Ramadan, when a Muslim reads the Holy Quran, every letter read in the Holy Quran will attract 1,000 rewards. Every letter. When you read Alif in Alhamdu, that Alif is one, Lam is one, thousand, Ha is 1,000. When you now calculate the number of letters. I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about the words. I'm not talking about the, 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 the verses. I'm not talking about the chapters. I'm talking about each letter of the Holy Quran. It attracted, one letter attracted 1,000 reward during uh, Ramadan. You will agree with me that that is a huge, that is huge reward from Almighty Allah. So therefore, instead of talking, during Ramadan, we channel it towards talking about Allah, talking about the Quran, and we're able to attract a lot of reward to ourselves during Ramadan. How do we now sustain that? The Kudra Tila will talk about it during the course of our, our lecture. And the fourth one is Tarkud Durub. Tarkud Durub simply means during Ramadan, we were able to keep away from sins. Those who play a uh, lottery during Ramadan, they, they desisted from it. Those who patronize a nightclub during Ramadan, there was no room for that. Those who engage in zina during Ramadan, they went on leave. Even those who committed crime, those who are using to committing a crime during Ramadan, they desisted from it. Every year, when you take the statistics of the crime rates during, during Ramadan, it's usually reduced, usually reduced, tremendous uh, reduction in the crime rate. What it means is that those who, who engage in, in a crime, we have several of them who are Muslims. I was uh, passing by a, a, a bus stop one day during Ramadan, and I had one uh, tout. He was telling his uh, other uh, his, his colleague that we didn't see you at Tamak yesterday. What happened? Now that my brother cannot come to Tamak, don't you know that I'm fasting? I was baffled. I smiled. Not only smiled, but I thank Allah that so those who were engaging in in court activities, those who were engaging in uh, criminal activities, those who were engaging in violent activities, they equally recognized. Ramadan and Tarkut Duru during Ramadan, people form the habits of uh, running away from uh, evil, evil activities. And during Ramadan, they believe that no, they will not engage in it. For Allah's sake, if a Muslim could run away from crime for 30 days, he must have gone through through spiritual debate, he, he must have learned a lot of by Almighty Allah to know that committing crime 
is actually wrong. Therefore, during that period that you are not committing crime, you are loved by Almighty Allah. Not only by Allah, you are also loved by your fellow human beings. You are loved by your neighbors. People say, oh, look at Alaji. Alaji, Alaji has done a new leaf. Look at our brother. He's now gentle. He's now serious. He's this, he's, he's that. Commendation during uh, Ramadan. And somebody told me, who is a non-Muslim, that if all Muslims on the Muslims. And of course, when you don't engage in uh, uh, social vices, criminal activities, violent activities, you are loved by Allah and are equally loved by fellow human beings. Even there will be peace in the society. And when there's peace in the society, everybody that contributes to the peace, therefore, part of the, the exercises that we engage in during Ramadan is to, to run away from our sins. If we could do that for 30 days, is telling us, is giving us a signal, the signal that that is the way a Muslim should live his life. That is the uh, the fourth one, brother and sisters in Islam. And we can now talk about uh, the fifth one, that is the Tekfiru Sorakat. During Ramadan, we cultivated the habits of giving, charity, sharing whatever we had from uh, whatever we had with our Muslim uh, brothers. Therefore, when we share we have, a deed of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallam, says, that person is not a Muslim. That person is not a Muslim. That person is not a Muslim. The followers now ask him, that, who is that person that is not a Muslim? That somebody who eats to his field while his neighbor goes hungry. There are so many of us that had more than enough to eat and throw away. But during Ramadan, Ramadan has given us another opportunity, the opportunity to share whatever we have. The opportunity, the opportunity to show to our fellow human beings, to our brothers, to our neighbors. Therefore, the kind of life we live during Ramadan is a life of sharing, life of giving, life of charity. And of course, when you give, when you give, definitely you will receive more from Almighty Allah. That's what the Holy Quran, that's what the, uh, the Quran uh, says. Therefore, part of the exercises we engage in we engage in the sharing. The prophet says, that's not that. Well, I'll be the example. The prophet says, people will think that, oh, oh, I, I cannot give until I'm rich as Dangote, until I'm rich as like, say, this and that. No. Even you can do Sodako with an orange, when you cut the orange into two, or you cut the apple into two, and you give your brother, your neighbor, the half of it, and you take the half of it, you also get a lot of reward. So we don't have to wait until we're, we're as rich as a dangote before we now start to give. And that is part of the exercises we engage in during Ramadan, when we prepare iftar and zaur for our Muslim brothers. Nasfa distributed food items, not only food items, but cooked food for Muslims, for fasting Muslims during Ramadan. Of course, let me, let me, let me, I mean, quite, quite, quite sufficient number of Muslims benefited from that. And of course, sponsored by some people who were expecting reward from my Almighty Allah. So therefore, during Ramadan, we were able to share, we were able to give, we were able to empathize with our fellow human beings. And of course, it has a lot of uh, reward. And uh, the sixth one is uh, sober, patience. Endurance during Ramadan. During Ramadan, 
I want to say that Ramadan, Ramadan forced so many people to be patient because even when, 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 you, have, when you have sufficient uh, energy as a result of the food you consume, you can go here and there. You can talk, you can abuse. But during Ramadan, Ramadan has come with a lesson of sabr, And that sabr is to be patient. Some people are patient because they don't have sufficient energy to make trouble. Why some people engage in it because of the fear of Almighty Allah? Whether you take the first theory or you take the second theory, the important message is that Muslims are patient during Ramadan. And of course, the promise is the reward of that patience is paradise. Whoever, whoever was patient during Ramadan, they, that person would definitely uh, enter paradise. Therefore, what Allah is telling us through Ramadan is that we, we were able to go through spiritual rebirth. We're able to go, to go through a lesson of our life. 30 days is like a student who has gone to school to learn. Having gone to school to learn, what is now required of that, of that Muslim brother is to now utilize the lessons he has learned. For example, when you train somebody to become a medical practitioner, a doctor, or you train somebody to become an engineer, or you train somebody to become a lawyer, the important thing is for him or her to go back into the society and now practice those uh, things that he has uh, learned. Therefore, brother as in Islam, we now come to the issue of uh, sustainability. All the lessons that we have learned in Ramadan, we have learned those lessons for the other 11 months of the year. What we have done, the exercises we have engaged in during Ramadan, is telling us that after Ramadan, we should sustain. What do we by sustaining such or those exercises, brothers as Sad Islam? Is uh, to continue to live that life. For example, when somebody presses you, ah, look at look at uh, Brother Lukman, for example. It's now gentle, it's now simple. I mean, he talks, he talks with humility. Oh, he's been helping people. Definitely, your people around you will love you. And when people around you love you, you will also love yourself. And Almighty Allah will equally love you for what you have done, for what you have become. To sustain those activities that were so rewarding during Ramadan, brothers and sisters in Islam, is so important and we must not joke with it. Now, let's start with uh, the first one, fasting. Ramadan has come and gone, but that does not close the gates of fasting in Islam. For example, well, well, let's start. Let's start with the first. The, the, the first during Shawwal, we may say, "Oh, Ramadan has come and gone. Therefore, I can no longer fast." No, there are a lot of fasting as recommended by Islam that are so rewarding. For example, call our Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in one of his uh, hadith that the month of Ramadan. Whoever engages in uh, Ramadan, uh, Thumati Moha, the sister to Shawal, and also now endeavors to fast another six days, just six days in the month of uh, uh, Shawal, Kana Kasiya Mudaha. I mean, it will give that person the, the opportunity of having engages in fasting for, for the whole year. What do we understand by that? The Prophet says, when we engage in Ramadan fast, and we add to it another six in the month of Shawwal. The month of Shawwal is the 10th month of Islam. We are now in that month of Shawwal. We add six. The Prophet says, we will get the reward of having engaged in the fasting throughout the year. You now, you now wonder, how possible is that? Can one engages in 30 days of Ramadan out of uh, out of over close to 400 uh, days, and uh, you equally engage in another six. How can we get the reward of uh, fasting for a whole year? The, uh, the I mean this is a, is, a, is a simple is a simple calculation. Quran says, Manja Abel Asana, Falawashi Ramatali, 
whoever, whoever engages in any activity that is uh, recognized by Allah, such a person will get minimum of uh, 10 rewards, minimum of 10 rewards. In other words, let's assume that we fast Ramadan for one day, <coughs> we get 10 rewards. The second day, 10 rewards, making 20. We were able to fast for 30 days. 30 days multiplied times 10. That will give us 300 days. That's guarantee level, 300 days. And in a year, we have more than, uh, we have more than uh, 300 uh, days. The prayer now says, we engage in our six during shawal. That six, we also times 10, will also give us uh, 60. In other words, if we get 300 rewards for Ramadan, I will get 60 days for shawal. That will give us 360 days. Brother and sisters in Islam, the calculation of uh, 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 months in Islam, according to the Ijira, is not up to 365. No. It could be 354 because we don't have any months in Islam that is more than 30. It could either be 29 or 30. Therefore, if we are able to get 360 days of uh, fasting, definitely that will have given us the reward of a fasting for a whole uh, year. That is the simple, uh, uh, the simple calculation of Islam. So therefore, that woman gone no. fast for six days during the month of uh, Shawal. That will give us the reward of 360 uh, uh, days. Not only that, another a fasting is, uh, is uh, the psalm of the uh, prophet Dawood. According to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after Lusiyam, Psalm of Dawood, Kana Yasumu Yawman, Wayuftiru Yawman, another fasting that we can engage in, which is not compulsory, but is voluntary, is the, the, the type of a fasting which Prophet Dawood engages in. Prophet Dawood will fast today, he will rest tomorrow. He will fast the following day and also rest. So that is another fast that is recommended for us by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those that will lament that, oh my God, Ramadan is gone. I cannot fast again. Ramadan is gone, but the windows of opportunities for fasting is still with us. So let us sustain it. Part of way of sustaining fasting is this uh, fasting of a Dao. And if that is too difficult for you to do, you can also do Samu Thalatha to Ayamun Kulushar. We can equally engage in another fast for three days uh, every month. Every every month. In every month, we have, according to Islam, the Sharia, Ayamu Bid. Ayamu Bid, those are the white days. The 13th day, the 14th day, and the 15th uh, day of uh, every uh, month in Hijra. You can also calculate it. That okay, I will fast 12, uh, 12, uh, 13, 13, 14, and 15 of, uh, of uh, the Ijira. If you calculate it using January, February, you'll not be able to get it. But we have a lot of application that will remind you of those uh, days. So, therefore, if you think Ramadan is gone, oh, yes, Ramadan is gone, but the opportunity to fast is not gone. We have months three days fasting every month, 13th, 14th, and 15th a day. Let us take that one. If we cannot take the, that of Dahud, we can take uh, this one. As not limited to that brother as, as in Islam, we also have another uh, fasting, uh, the fasting of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, Mondays and uh, Thursdays of the week. 
The one I mentioned earlier is uh, the first of the months. We also have the week. The used to fast on Mondays and thought. And when he was asked the reason for fasting, one of the reasons he gave was that the activities of man will be collated on Mondays and Thursdays. And the prophet said, I want my activity to be collated while I'm fasting. So what it means is that fasting of that day will be recorded Another type of uh, fasting uh, that's uh, uh, the, uh, the we have the month of uh, Muharram, <clears throat> Muharram, which is the first uh, month of the year. Muharram, fasting on the ninth and tenth of Muharram is also recommended. That Muharram is the first month of the of the Hijra. We fast on the ninth, we fast on the tenth, and we get adequate uh, uh, reward. Also, the month of the day of uh, Arafah. For those engaging in uh, Hajj, they will not fast on Arafah today. But those of us that are not taking part in Hajj, to fast on Arafah day is recommended. I will get a lot of uh, a lot of reward. <coughs> uh, also, the fasting of uh, of uh, uh, the last yeah, we can equally fast not only the ninth day but the eighth day of the Ija also. We can also fast there. So that, there are several other fasting in Islam. The, the, the month of Rajab, the Yorubas, we call it uh, Awarubu. That is uh, the fasting for the mature they were once. Why do they call it fasting for the mature ones? Because it's not compulsory. And when you fast it, it starts with a lot of uh, <coughs> excuse me, reward. Also, fasting during the Shaban is another uh, month. So brother says in Islam, to sustain the rewarding activities, rewarding exercises during Ramadan, even Ramadan is gone, but fasting is not uh, gone. I've given an example of about 10 different uh, ways by which you can sustain our fasting. And uh, I, I believe if we are able to engage in either all or parts of these, Definitely, we will get the, the reward. We will still be loved by Almighty Allah. Like I said during the beginning of this lecture, that as Muslims, we underrated ourselves. Underrated in the sense that we don't even know what we are capable of doing. We don't know that we can engage in highly spiritual exercises. But when Ramadan came, Ramadan make us realize our potential, what we are capable of doing, what we could not do before Ramadan. But now that we have done such things during Ramadan, now that we have trained ourselves, let us now continue that way. When we continue that way, definitely uh, will not be the same uh, again. That is talking about uh, about uh, fasting, brothers and sisters uh, in Islam. I also call uh, talk about uh, the uh, killer to know regul uh, 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 re regulation of our sleeping uh, habits. Brothers and sisters in Islam, to engage in a qiyamul is something that we cannot do because Almighty Allah that has created us, He has created us with potentials. He has, but we cannot realize these potentials unless we strive 
We cannot get these uh, potentials unless we, 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 we train ourselves, we, re, we restrain ourselves. What the body likes is to sleep and enjoy the sleep. But when we sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and we abandon Almighty Allah, we are not being fair to ourselves. When we talk about our body, Allah has the right to our body. Allah has the right over our body. Then we as individuals, we have rights over our body. And also our family, our wives and, and, and so on, they also have rights over our body. That's divided into three. We have to give Allah his right. The right of Allah is to dedicate part of that night in the worship of Allah. It may be difficult for us, as it was difficult when we started the Ramadan. You, you, you discover that some people will not wake up until uh, even 4 text during Ramadan, during the beginning of Ramadan. But later on, they were able to adjust to the 3 to 3 30. You can also start with two, two rakats of Nafila. When you start with two rakats today, you do istighfar, you do tahmid, say, I mean, you, you seek a forgiveness from Almighty Allah, you give thanks to Him for what He has done. Today, just two rakats. You can rest. I'm, I'm talking about the timetable on how to train ourselves. Because that's education, educational theory. You can start with the two rakats. Maybe in about two or three days after, increases to four, to six, to 10. Before you know it, your body system will have adjusted to it. Look at during, uh, during Ramadan, our body system adjusted quickly because it, when you give your body a signal that this is what you want to do, the body will. And if you also train your body to spend the whole night sleeping, your body will also adjust to that. Therefore, I'm recommending that because we have passed through the 30 days of Ramadan, we have engaged in Qiyamul Layl. Now that Ramadan is gone, let us sustain that activity. One of the rewards or one of the benefits of waking up at night is that, according to the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, every day, every day, Almighty Allah will descend to the first heaven and He will ask. The people who are those of you that are awake, that you want something from me, that want me to give you, ask me, I will give you. Who are those that are seeking for my forgiveness? Ask me, I will forgive you. Who are those that are in need of a particular thing from me? Ask and let me give you. So there, when we get used to Kiyamulayl, our body will have been trained and uh, will also it will also give us spiritual elevation. And when you are elevated spiritually, definitely your, your supplications become answered by Almighty Allah. We are not saying that Allah does not answer supplication during the day, but it is faster when you engage in it at night, during the middle of night, when everybody was asleep, when everybody is asleep, because uh, it is a sacrifice. And your sacrifice cannot be in vain. Therefore, let us sustain that Kiyamule. Let us sustain fasting. Of course, any day you are not fasting, you can wake up around around the around the four. Oh yes, it's okay. Four thirty is okay. Just engage. Just ensure that you engage in the worship of Almighty Allah, and you get a lot of. Uh, a lot of a reward. Uh, that is talking about uh, talking about the Kiyamu name and the regulation of our eating habits. Of course, the talking habit also. Brother Asas in Islam, when our mother Aisha was asked to describe the character of Muhammad, Aisha said, when you want to know the character of the Prophet, that is Quran. This Quran 
Allah has revealed the Holy Quran to us in order to solve our spiritual, social, political uh, issues. Therefore, let us take our Quran. Mm -hmm. Let us do Tilawa. We have been talking about uh, politics for, oh yes, we cannot do without talking about it. But we don't spend the whole time talking about, about politics. Even when you talk about politics, we still have to call on Allah to guide us and to give us the right leader. So therefore, talking about it, let us talk to Allah more. Let's talk to Allah more. Talking to Allah more by reading the Holy Quran, by the Tilawatul Quran. Let us learn the Holy Quran. Let us pick the lessons. Allah has revealed in the Holy Quran healing, spiritual healing, political healing, social healing, educational healing. Every form of healing is, is embedded in the Holy Quran. But the problem is that we spend a lot of time talking without looking at Quran. Let us look at Quran. Let us study Quran. Let us implement Quran. Let us use the Holy Quran as individuals. When you learn from the Holy Quran and you shape your life with the revelation of the Holy Quran, you'll be better than every other person. When you look at some of the issues we have in our society today, brothers and Islam, they, 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 they are social issues. They are spiritual issues. When I remember spiritual issues, for example, when you read Quran and you learn that Allah gives power to whoever he wills, he takes over power from whoever he wills. The struggle to get the power at all costs will be minimized because we know it is only Allah that, that, can, that can take you to that position. 2023 is coming and we have a lot of people who are still seeking for, for, for power. Those that are seeking for power, let them begin with the only Quran. Let them, read, let them read the history of those who gain power and use the power judiciously what happened to them at the end of it? Let them also read. I'm talking about the Muslims among them. Let them also read about those who struggle to get power and they use it to benefit themselves alone. What happened to them? How did they end their life? When we learn Quran with the lessons from the Quran and we, we reshape our life, our character, our attitude with the Holy Quran, the problem we have in Nigeria will be minimized. How can somebody take uh, arms against a federal human being? If so, the person read the Holy Quran, that whoever mm -hmm. kills a Muslim, when you read Quran, you and you learn that when you kill a Muslim, deliberately, without committing any, any, any offense, either because you want to make a money ritual or because you want to get to power, get him out of the way. The, 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 this is helpful. When we read Quran, when we internalize the Holy Quran, the struggle, I mean, to get to power at all costs, we are talking about 2023, only Allah knows those that will be alive in 2023. It's only Allah that knows. Nobody is guaranteed that he will be alive in that period. Therefore, why don't we rely on Allah? Why don't we why don't we pray mm -hmm. to Allah to give us to give us the best leader? So that's what the only Quran we do in when we read Quran and when we start with that our society will become better. During Ramadan, so many tafsir organized. And I'm using this opportunity to tafsir be limited. Alhamdulillah that there is weekly tafsir of, uh, of Nasfat, interesting program. And I commend Nasfat for doing that. Let us continue to do. Even after the, 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 the weekly, 
let us extend it to daily. It's online. And the leadership of our society, I mean, refined uh, people, technologically based, uh, inclined uh, people. So we can have series of programs. I'm not saying we are not doing, oh yes, we are not doing, it, but don't let us relent. Let us do more in order to justify our existence as the pay certain Islamic uh, organization. And I'm appealing to other, other organizations, other mosques, that your tefsir during Ramadan, tefsir shouldn't be during Ramadan alone. I would not say that we have to wait for another year before we listen to the exigencies of the Holy Quran. Let us do more. People want to listen. People want to learn about Islam, but they are only looking for platform. Allah will for this type of a platform organized by Nasfat. The Almighty Allah reward the leaders of the Nasfat and those of us that are saddled with that responsibility. But let us do more. Let us show others how to do it so that our society will be better. Now, I also talk about the Tefiru Surakot, that during Ramadan, we, we organize feasts, feeding, a lot of gifts. And they were given gifts to our fathers, like somebody one of us told me that uh, that oh who oh Allah why 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 don't you make every day day of Ramadan and I love I say ah why one of the gifts so another not the Muslim got you know God's more than enough even in my in my in my outreach that's a uh, dolphin. The Koyi Dolphin uh, Nasfat. Every Sunday, we are giving out food items donated by Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam. Now that Ramadan is gone, let us continue. People are The of country is difficult. Allah realize that some people are blessed. Some people don't have problems. Some people, but there are a lot of people who are hungry. Let us remember them. Let us remember that. Look at the institution of a Zakat in Fitri. Zakat of instituted in order to take the beggars out of the streets on this day. That's a very, very good uh, lesson. That lesson is that don't let them beg before you give them. When some people are, 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 are hungry, they are capable of doing things. That's why the Holy Prophet Muhammad says, Allah Umar. You can see the prophet likened kufru and uh, kufru and uh, and fakru because a man who is hungry can do anything. When you ask him to worship an idol to get food, he can he can do it. Therefore, let us. This is society. The reason why some people take up arms, I'm not trying to justify it. Is because of hunger in the land. Of course, the government is doing enough. Individuals are doing enough. But when you calculate, when you aggregate what the government is doing with what individuals are doing, we can. The the the, the fact is that it's not enough. Is is not getting to the people. The hunger, the poverty in the land, as a result of uh, the, the the economic condition of the country. It's so difficult. Therefore, for those of us who have, let us remember. That's the address of the Holy Prophet. That person is not a Muslim. He's not a Muslim. Uh, what can, can he make him a Muslim? He is to love for his brother what he loves for himself. For example, what do I love my, for myself? Comforts of life. I want to eat 